Hey y'all, it's your girl Slay Bainy, and I am back with another YouTube video. Today is not a get ready with me, but it is a, well not so quick, but it is definitely a conversation that is on trend right now, talking about becoming the main character of my life, how I became the main character of my life, and why you should too. Go ahead and click that like button if you enjoy watching the video. Also, if you really enjoy watching the video, hit that subscribe button and make sure to hit that bell so that you can be notified on everything I post. If you are already a part of the Slay Bainey family, what's up, y'all? Okay, so let's get into it. Let's get into, well, first let's get into this lip, baby. Um, I actually just cut this wig. It is from Wig Dealer. When I bought it, it was 14 inches or maybe 16. I never buy more than 16, so it definitely wasn't more than 16 inches long. Um, and it was completely black or like dark 1B or something like that. And I had decided to cut it and um i'm always cutting hair so i did that and obviously i decided to color it it took me like two or three different processes to get it to this color i knew i wanted highlights i gave myself highlights um mainly in the front and then everything is like low lights in the back and in between so i can't tell you where i got it from because i technically customized this myself no i am not a cosmetologist i am a makeup artist and a licensed esthetician i'm very much so into hair but i don't think i would ever want to be a hairdresser and i definitely wasn't about to do the 1200 hours if you want to know how i or why i started esthetician school and uh, what that was like for me go ahead and look at the link below in the description box and it will be linked there for you to check it out if that's something you're interested in watching so main character first what is it and why is it trending so it's really trending on tiktok right now being a main character of your life really means at least for me i think it's more than likely subjective i haven't heard anyone directly talk about what it means to be the main character but what it means for me is not are you only the protagonist right the 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 person that everything happens to in your life you can't really see anything from anyone else's perspective you can only see it from your own but also you are the person that makes things happen for yourself and I think that's what becoming the main character is it's about not passively just it's experiencing life and thinking that life happens to you it's really about life happening for you and you seeing everything through the lens of this is all happening to better myself but how can i take this and make it mine how can how can i make life my bitch basically that's how i see being the main character um there are some ways that people kind of talk about being the main character and then the other characters surrounding them almost in a way where it's like they're not real they're kind of just fill-ins like think of like the playing the sims game like none of those other characters are real you don't know who's if there's a person that's really working behind them and being that character or they're just made by the computer so it's almost like i guess in a matrix kind of way like maybe they're glitching the system maybe they're just here to teach you something they're not real they're not real the only real experience of their experience is you touch and experience and i do think that's slightly problematic I just put that on us okay so main character how i became the main character based on the way that i perceive um what a main character is when it comes to this trend so i think i've always kind of been the main character i know that's a womp womp mom situation but um i think i have because quick little backstory i was born in jamaica i came to america when i was two or three years old i first made a pit stop in new york from what i was told and then like a few months later we went to michigan or maybe it was a year later i don't know but we stayed in new york for a little bit and then we went to michigan detroit specifically i remember getting out of the car and it was just mad snow and i just remember looking at like what is this like what is this it's cold what is this but i think my grandma told me before we got a car like it's snow but i'm still kind of like what the fuck is snow you know like so um we lived in detroit and then in southfield which is like borderline detroit kind of kind of um i guess if detroit for the most part is lower class and south south southfield is more considered like middle class i wouldn't say upper middle but you can definitely have upper middle but i would say middle to upper middle class depending on where in southfield um 
but the school systems were definitely nice, nicer and like the areas we had like a pool in our uh, condominium complex and school bus would pick us right up outside and there were like a lot of kids etc 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 but when I was a kid anytime I would think about like what I want to be when I grow up and not even like prompt like asked what do I want to be what do I want to be when I grow up um I would always picture myself as a per person of importance. I pictured myself as someone who was influential in a way. I pictured myself as an ice skater. I wanted to be an ice skater for a little bit. Um, I pictured myself as a teacher. I pictured myself as a hairstylist. And then I wanted to become a singer. And although you kind of be like, well, a hairstylist isn't really influential. Uh -huh. Yeah, they are. Because who are you going to to get these trending looks? Your hairstylist. Like, it was some... It was, I never connected it until recently, but I realized like I always wanted to influence. I always, although I don't want to be an influencer now, really, but I've always wanted to like be someone that people came to see, if that makes sense. Um, kind of like all eyes on me kind of thing. If I wasn't running the show, then I was the show hence ice skater. Again, as a child, I don't think I recognized any of that. I just knew I wanted all eyes on me. Um, and then I became probably 13 and or 12. I know I was definitely living in Southfield by then. I decided I wanted to be a singer. Um, and before I ended up moving to New York, which was like out of the blue because of basically I got in trouble. Um, I was actually supposed to go to Aaliyah school. I had found out, well, I was already a fan of Aaliyah and that was like during the B2K era. Um, and I was probably like in sixth or seventh grade at this time, or maybe it was the beginning of eighth. Definitely, Aaliyah died the summer before I went to eighth grade. But um, I think I was like in seventh, six or seven when I knew I wanted to be a singer. And I had spoken to my grandmother about going to Aaliyah's performing arts school. I have no idea how I was going to get there because we were living in Southfield and her school was in like Detroit, Detroit. So I didn't know, but I know I wanted to go there. So. It was kind of like, I guess, in the talks, but I know I wanted to be a singer. So fast forward, I moved to New York, and I feel like the main character I kind of already was developing into being, knowing that these are things I want for myself, knowing that it was going to take hard work and practice. I was also the kid that when I was bored, I would say, hey, cousins, let's make something up. I just made up. I didn't call it an Akon at that point, but I already made up some steps and I would I would always teach them the moves. They were never choreographing the moves. I was always teaching them the moves. And then we would put on a show for like my aunt and my uncle and he would record it. So um, I think I kind of already knew that things took work and I was willing to put in that work too. Like I was willing to create a production. I was willing to be the main character and do the work to put on the show which would be my life um but again as a child i don't think i knew that stuff so when i went to new york or came to new york um i think naturally as an adolescence i that kind of like fell to the wayside because i think one you're in a weird space you i got my period when i was like in fifth grade but I uh I don't know I just I just I felt so I was already going through stuff at home and stuff like that so for a while I became very introverted and very to myself and I would hold things in I wouldn't share them because I was led to feel I don't I've gone to school and someone who was influential to me has stated no one can make you feel any way they can help lead you but you are the deciding factor whether or not you actually want to feel that way and if you actually remain feeling that way which goes towards the main character idea as well too so as an adolescent i was just going through stuff and i was just like not i wasn't thinking about like my life in terms of like how is my life going to be this grand thing I remember when i was living in new york i was no longer living with my grandmother i was living with my father and he's very very practical and although i'm a capricorn i'm a realist all that um he's very like 
I want to be a singer, he's like, go to school for nursing. You know, like very, there is no head up in the sky. It's what's proven, what's shown, this is what works, this doesn't. And like, even when we was watching award shows, he would like bring me to the side and be like, like one time Alicia Keys got an award and I guess the way that she verbed herself was not up to par. And he was like, see, see, this is what happens when you drop out of school. She didn't even sound, you know, educated. Like, and I was just like, you want to be my manager? <laughs> because this is what I want. This is what I want. And I, But I think in a way I kind of was taught to subside things that I want for myself for what other people think were best for me because that's what parents do, right? Um, I don't think in any way, shape, or form I became a follower or I became easily led um, by others, but I did eventually let go of the dream. Um, I know this because by college, before college, in high school, I ended up becoming a dance teacher because I really wanted to teach dance. In the after school program, I was, I was at first a group leader. I saw a girl dancing. I thought she was dope. I started dancing with her. She got fired so the, or quit. I don't know. She wasn't working there no more. So then I was like, it's time for me to step in. And at first, they weren't trying to hire me because I was really young. I was 16. So during my junior, no, my sophomore year, which was 10th grade, I volunteered the whole year as a dance teacher, um, hoping that it would show them like I'm serious and it paid off and they hired me the next year because they realized not only was I retaining kids, I was also bringing new kids into the program because they wanted to be in my dance group. So they hired me and I remember kids asking me like, um, do you want to be like a dancer when you grow up? And I remember being like, no, I'm smarter than that, which is so offensive because I'm a dancer like I I became a dancer so it was like ooh but um that's another story for another day so I ended up going to college and <clears throat> I do think that independence kind of sort of brought the protagonist like if the protagonist was here when I was in don't be looking at my lace either if the protagonist was here when I was in high school it was like here when I was in college it wasn't here I wasn't taking the reins, but when I know I wasn't really taking the reins of my life was because being a dancer, right, something I'm truly interested in, or the creative, I also was, I was also interested in um, interior design, and my stepmother told me, like, don't do that, do something that's always in demand, like nursing, again, I'm Jamaican, a bunch of Jamaicans are nurses, and uh, no shade, There's, I don't know about a lot of Jamaican doctors, but a bunch are nurses in the medical field. Um, that's like probably the biggest one. I can't even remember another field after that that Jamaicans are big in other than the food industry and open up open up their own like shops. So I went to school for forensic investigations. I was also interested in criminal justice, but it was just something that like I like to watch CSI as a result. Not really because I wanted to be a crime scene investigator. I just found those shows really interesting. And it's funny because I remember going to college and they were like how many of y'all watch CSI? And everyone in the room put their hand up. They're like, I want you to know now none of that is real. Like, none of it's real. That's not how crime scene investigation works. But whatever, we're going to get into that. But that showed me, now looking back at it, that I was no longer... Sorry. That feels so good. I was no longer taking the reins. Yo, I love this little band. I'm really not a side band girl. But I made it real 90s. I know I'm going off topic. But I made it real 90s. Do it look 90s? Because I wanted it to look 90s. But I've been thinking about growing out my hair. And I was like, if I do grow out my hair, this will be the length I grow too. So I was just like, yeah. I can kind of see myself in the red. So I'm looking that way. So I um I was in college for something I wasn't truly interested in. If I could have had it my way, if my father was supportive of it, I would have gone to school for creativity. Creative reasons or if I would have known I would have cared about skincare as much as I do I would have absolutely gone to school for dermatology but I don't think I really had an avenue I think that this time period in my life where I'm, I'm I've grown into being interested in that it was supposed to happen that way but um so I went to school for criminal justice associate's degree and then I continued with school to get my bachelor's and I think I had to get my master's I wanted to go into forensic um, psychology 
end up dropping out of school um, in my third year because I don't know I just couldn't connect and um, I left school and I started having a world when I think in your 20s you have this weird early midlife crisis where you're like I was supposed to achieve all this stuff by 25 and I'm 23 or I'm 22 and I'm nowhere close to it I'm not even doing what I went to school for all this other stuff and all of my friends were experiencing it, experiencing it too and it was just like so what, what are we doing here like what is, uh, what's the tea like why are we here baby and um we always like I hate school I hate my parents like we all went to school for nothing all this waste of fucking time but also I started really bumping heads with friends who I thought were friends for life and it was honestly me kind of just trying to figure out my life and what I was going to do with that I was working at Express on Fifth Avenue which is a clothing store I know y'all got it different places but y'all might be like which is Express we're talking about Express the clothing store and I was also living in Brooklyn and I'm from the Bronx so majority of the people I know is from the Bronx maybe a few people I know from college are in Brooklyn but I am from the Bronx so my peoples are in the Bronx and some people would feel a way because I wasn't coming up there to see them, but it took me years to realize they weren't coming to Brooklyn to see me either. But then they would make it an issue between us and like, you're never here, you're never around. You know, you don't really mess with us like that. Or I was just in my own world. I was in my own world. And I started dancing again. And then other groups of friends felt like I switched them out for this group of friends. But they also weren't coming to see me either. They weren't hitting me up and saying, hey, can you come out? So I was like, how were you expecting to see me when you weren't letting me know that you want to see me? Like, it's a two-way street. I'm I'm not hitting you up because I'm busy. Not because I'm one of those friends. We're not speaking every day, baby. If you want to, I'm so sorry. We're going to have to find we're going to be associates and not friends because I don't want to disappoint you. You're not speaking to me every day. I, I got stuff to do. And so a lot of times I don't want to speak. So, um, and it's no shade. It's, no, it's nothing towards each other, you know. It's just, it is what it is. So, um, I remember once I was staying with a friend and we got into a huge argument to the point that I was no longer comfortable staying there. Despite the fact that her family unofficially but adopted me like it was like you know like you're my daughter and you know you belong here just like the other rest of us but it was like but that's that's my friend you know and if we not on good terms I don't want it to just be a leecher I don't want to be here so I remember like staying at my homie house in Brooklyn he ended up stealing a credit card from me running that shit up maxing it out now I'm taking out a um not a restraining order but charges on him at the pre precinct let them know this is his name they of course did nothing about it never arrested him i don't think they ever even went to his house i don't think anything ever happened of it um pretty sure i would have known i then at another point was in a abusive relationship that a lot of people don't know about and we were damn near homeless i ended up losing my job at express and mind you the rent we were renting a room in a private home and it was nothing but men on the floor. I'm the only female. We were sharing one bathroom, me and my boyfriend at the time. And I could barely, I couldn't really help with rent. And we could barely buy groceries. And when we bought groceries, it was just like ramen noodles and hot dogs just to like be alive, really. Like, and, and that the, the boxes of juice juices, it's like, I don't know if it was minute made, but it was like $2. Or we will try to stack up on that when we could. Going through a lot and... By the time I I ended up moving, my aunt had got an apartment in Brooklyn. So I ended up moving out, breaking up with him. I, I feel like I snuck out. I do. I feel like I snuck out. I don't want to say it was that, that bad. Because I ended up like an idiot going back to him and dealing with him again. But um, I also just didn't feel like I owed him anything, I think. So I snuck out. And um, I was living with my aunt in Brooklyn. And then me and my other aunt weren't getting along. Just it just just felt like after every turn it was just something else, something else, something else, something else. And I think I truly just got tired of living a life where I felt like I was not in control of my life. And so I turned to initially religion that turned into spirituality. So I would like go to the Rock Church church in New York City. They have different locations, they're mainly in Queens. But the one I went to, or the branch I went to, was in um, New York. They would like rent out a studio and have service in there on Sundays. 
and um then i met a uh, like a church sister who was to like help me in terms of like um i wanted to get baptized and i would have to go up to the bronx from where i was to like read with her and study the bible and everything everything end up getting baptized and i would like fast and all this other stuff then we end up moving out of brooklyn to another apartment in queen but i'm still my aunt she was just getting a different apartment and I remember at some point, at this point I'm teaching, or no, I'm working at a dance studio in the city as a barista, and I was still going through like my spiritual practices, become more spiritual than religious, and I don't remember what prompted the thought, but I I was on the bus on the way to the J, was it the J train? The E train, because I was getting on, on Sutphin Avenue, um, or Sutphin Boulevard, Boulevard, I think, it's Sutphin, I know that much. I would get on a something and ride it into the city and uh, something I don't remember what the thought process was but I just remember on being on the bus and riding you can either be the hero or the villain in your own story and I think once that thought came to me I wish I could tell you what prompted the thought but I know at that time I was reading the Bible I was doing a lot of meditation I would be moved to tears through meditation and stuff like that, just connecting with God. And I just remember it coming to me. Things would just come to me and I would just write them down. I don't even know where the book is. Like that's silly that I lost it, but that's what I wrote down. You can either be the, the hero or the villain in your own story, like to yourself, to your own life. Um, and I think I started moving differently ever since then. Um, I can't I couldn't tell you how I couldn't tell you that I called everybody and I was just like no you're no longer my friend I don't I think it was a very quiet confidence it was a very quiet confidence to say you were in control no more no more are you gonna sit here and allow people or allow circumstances to take control of you and even then in all honesty it it wasn't like I was just cleansed and I was just a newborn again it still took a lot of learning it still took a lot of learning to be like basically reiterating re-stamping re-proving re getting it through your thick skull Renee that this is your life and uh, you've actually been the villain to yourself this whole time and y'all that that shit was a like I think I was mad so whether or not you prescribe to reading whether you prescribe to clairvoyance any of that that's fine if you don't I do I do not think that's something of the devil I do not think that's something that's evil if you think it that's okay that's all right that's cool if you write that I am deleting it because don't please don't spew your thoughts over here that's okay that you don't think it I, I believe in God and I also believe that just because you don't call yourself a prophet, specifically the word prophet does not make you of the devil. There's different words. Do you believe someone who practices Buddhism is evil? Because that's what they grew up in. They all have to be Christian. Christians, like, come on, we, we learned about the Crusaders. We learned about, all, like, to stop, stop, stop. Christianity is a branch of Catholicism, and you guys don't. Okay, I'm going to get into a spiel about that, so bring it back, bring it back. So, I was speaking to, I had met a clairvoyant who's also a life coach. And basically, she let me know, this is all about you. Like, and it's not 100% your fault. You're kind of acting out a trauma that you have not resolved. It's not for you to resolve on your own. But you're going to have to learn which part is theirs. Which, which part of the trauma is there for you for them to keep and them to figure out those who inflicted it on you and which part of it is yours which part of it which what, what part of it did you prolong how did you prolong this how are you acting out of your trauma right now how is it not serving you yeah and when I realized when she told you Yo, when she told me I was the villain of my own life, bruh. And you should have a time machine. Like, I was, I was done with myself. Like, I was what? Because I think for a long time I was used to saying, 
this person, you hurt me, 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 you hurt me. And honestly, 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 I can honestly say, I don't know if anyone can really say that I hurt them. And that's not to say I've never hurt anyone's feelings. I mean, like, I think I'll be surprised if someone said, like, you caused me lasting pain. Like, pain that it took years to get. I would be very surprised not to play a victim but it's because i stay so much in my own lane that i would be surprised if someone said you know you, you don't even understand the depth of it like i still think about it and that was years ago you know like i'll be surprised and i feel like i can already think of the people though and i wouldn't even listen to them because no you're projecting stuff so um which is probably something i need to work on but uh yeah, once you told me that, it took me a minute, bro. It took me a minute to be like, which way I'm going to go? Which way I'm going to go? Which way I'm going to go? Because I could go down this road and act like that was never said to me. Or I could go down this road and try to address that. And I didn't really know how to. So I began looking at the things I've heard about myself. And I started to try... I started to try and address those things. Like, why do you behave that way? Who taught you to behave that way? When people say that you're standoffish, why are you that way? Because I'm trying to protect myself. Why are you trying to protect yourself? Who hurt you? Who made you feel like your words weren't valued? How is that gonna help you? How has that hurt you? How has that hurt other people? How have people felt that you were unattainable in a way that's just human nature we're not even talking about like in a romantic way we're just talking about like and i thank god because those are things that i've prayed for i've prayed for conviction i pray for that all the time and y'all when i say my even when i'm on my cheat day eating i have too much conviction my, my mind is like you really gonna eat it you really gonna eat it it's a lot of conviction over here um I've asked to open up my eyes to things, to show me truth, even the truth that's going to hurt, show me the truth. And there have been times where I have been low, low because of realizing some truths. And uh, it's what I asked for, you know, and this was made to, this was presented to make me better, um, which can get very tiring at points because... <sighs> The, the goal is, right, when you read a book or you watch a movie about a main character, the goal is, is for a happily ever after. But sometimes that doesn't happen. And I don't think even when we watch movies, unless it's like an obvious, like say Catcher in the Rye, it's obvious the father was the issue. <laughs> but he didn't see it as that, you know? So do we want that? Or do we want, I don't think ha happily ever after really exists, but close enough to it where we can close our eyes at our last breath and say, I'm at peace with what I did with my life. Doesn't mean I did everything perfect, but I am at peace. Number one, I think that one of the ways that's important when you're, you are the main character is to forgive yourself in advance because you're going to fuck up. You are not going to do everything right in this book. There are going to be characters that are antagonists and there are going to be characters that can be co-protagonists, right? You're supporting leads. And I think that that is where I find it problematic when they're saying like, you know, these people aren't really real around you. It's like, but they are. They're real people. They have human feelings. Not every, there are some background noises, right? These strangers say you're in the airport and there's one strangers who you never connect with, but maybe, maybe there's a connection there. You know, like, I, I don't want to go too deep into it, but I think long, short story, 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 long story short is being the main character to yourself is extremely important because how else are you going to achieve what you want in your life? You have to look at yourself as the main character. And I think it's almost nature to be like, well, duh, of course I'm the main character. I can't hear anyone else's thoughts. I can only see things through my lens. That's true. 
but I think one is important for you to not look well I, I feel like I said one already like I feel like it's important for you to not view yourself as the only character you're not the only important character but you are the most important character in a book that I read by Napoleon Hill a conversation with the devil the devil told Napoleon Hill what people don't realize is is that if they owe no one else happiness they owe themselves happiness and if people could just commit to making themselves happy in their life I wouldn't be able to penetrate them so quickly or easily I wouldn't be able to use all these distractions with sex drugs alcohol food the love of sleep lust whatever I wouldn't be able to use these things against them if they were to just develop that mindset to say I'm going to attack this goal with everything I have and I'm gonna achieve it until it's done like once you became the become that main character you need to be hyper focused on not just goals but every step of your life you need to be hyper focused on now I don't think the past should be forgotten it should be considered um, and you also need to be focused on the end result and understand that you are the only person that's going to get you there not your friends not your family members unfortunately a lot of times as an entrepreneur who has had several legal entities your family is not the one that's buying all your ish they may support you yes and that's awesome but they might not you know when I had a dance uh, corporation none of my family supported that but most of my family do don't even want me to be concerned with dance at all they never did um, but that's what the main character is being it's, it's blocking out all that noise and saying this is me this is now but again I don't think that it's something that you should be in or you should be unconcerned with how you may affect other people because it all comes around, right? You have to be concerned about how you affect other people because you have karma coming back to you for the way that you've treated others, for the works that you've done. Um, and realistically, you just wanna be a good person. So being a main character means taking life by the reins and saying, giddy the fuck up, giddy it. Let's, let's fucking go, let's go, let's go. We're going right, now we're going left. Okay, you didn't listen, let's, let's Let's, let's go let's go left yeah so that is really it that's it um i hope that made sense because this is just all off the dome i was thinking about it while i was on my makeup but it's all off the dome um and yeah so the next video coming up should be a self-care video so i will see you guys soon thanks for watching